fuck, there's like a hair on my upper lip and I know it's not my mustache because I shaved that. Obviously, because you saw the title with another story time. So this, this, this amazing, by far the best date I've ever been on, starts out on Tinder, where all the great love stories begin. So I'm, I'm, I'm going, and I'm swiping and swiping and swiping, and I get to this picture, and he looks like Nick Jonas, and I'm like, all right, Nick Jonas is a babe. Click. We match, and we start, like, messaging back and forth, and we're clicking, we're vibing. He's not super weird, which is usually what happens on Tinder. So I drove out to Santa Monica Friday. I drive out to Santa Monica, and I'm waiting for him to get there, and I only have to wait for, like, five minutes. I see him from afar walking to me, and I'm like, oh my god, it's Nick Jonas, but not really. We, we walk and we're talking, the conversation's flowing, witty banter back and forth, and we sit down to like talk at like a bench. And it's like overlooking the pier and the beach and the water, and it's like so cute, you know. Uh, and he brings up, like he, we asked the basics, like why are you on Tinder? That ended up being basic, but whatever. And then he asks, like, what happened with the last person that you met on Tinder? And I was like, uh, like, the last guy I met on Tinder. And, like, I, I, to I told him, I was like, yeah, it didn't really work out. He just got really excited a little too fast. And I kind of just, like, did a brush off, not gonna lie. And so, he proceeds to give me dating advice as he's on a date with me about a different date. And I'm just sitting there like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Like, woo me. Don't make me want to smack you in the face. That's not what you do. That's not how you're supposed to play a first date, boys. Oh, and I change the subject. And then he goes, yeah, like, he changes it back. But this time, about him. About the last girl he met-ish on Tinder. And he starts telling me, yeah, like, I had some serious feelings for this girl. Like, she was really awesome. Like, I think I even, like, loved her. But, I mean, we didn't even meet. And I go, whoa, like, double take. What? You hadn't met her yet, and you think you loved her. Maybe this doesn't weird as many people out, but I feel like it should, because it really weirds me out, and like, it not weirding people out weirds me out even more. You still with me? No, me neither. So, he starts telling me that, and he's like, yeah, like, we were gonna meet at a music festival, and like, I, he, he goes on like this 15 minute, like, tangent about this like girl that he never met, but he thought he was in love with. And then she just got too clingy. And I was like, and he was talking to this person for like months, months, not just like weeks, months, not days, months. And they only lived like an hour away. Like, do you know the show Catfish is a real thing? Like, do I need to call Neve? Like, yo bro, we got a situation up in here. Moving on. So after he tells me about, we'll just say it's his ex, because it might as fucking well be, he starts like casually putting his hands on my leg. And I don't know why I didn't stop it. I feel like maybe, I, I kind of felt like I was watching it on the outside. Like, th like I was watching this train wreck slowly just explode. So he... He's like trying to like casually touch my leg and I'm just like, I'm fucking hungry. Like we should go get food. <laughs> Awkward turtle that I am. So we start walking to the restaurant and he just walks up next to me and just grabs my hand and I'm like, I've literally known you for like 30 minutes. What the shit? What the shit? Do I let go of his hand? No, because the idea of doing that feels more awkward than actually like touching his hand. I don't know how that's possible, but the idea of me like, being like, whoa, dude, back up, feels more awkward than like his hand. So 
so he's a man. And at this point, I start walking faster. Like, my long limbs are out of here. So we get into the restaurant. And I had thought that, like, the worst was done. Like, we're, we're good. We're, we're eating food. I'm about to drink. That makes everything better. Not even my drinks could make this night better. So he orders like two big ass entrees for his dinner and he also orders an appetizer and he eats most of the app. He eats this in like two minutes, but, but, but before that happens, like before he, I literally see this man shove this food down his like gullet. He brings up like random topics and then somehow, somehow, he manages to tell me that he only lost his virginity a little bit ago. I was like, what the fuck? Why do you tell, why, why do you tell me this? I don't care. Somehow he brings that conversation. I think it has something to do with, cause like he was telling me like how his brother was like the bad kid in the family and he was like the good kid in the family because he only had sex a couple months ago. Now I'm sitting there with my jambalaya thinking about awkward sex that he's having with a, na a faceless stranger. Nobody wants that. I'm sure you didn't want it, but you got it. Thanks, bro. Cool beans. So as we're eating our food, as he's guzzling his food as I'm eating my food like a normal human being, I'm like, I need to get the fuck out of this situation, like, as soon as possible. Like, there's no way there's going to be a second part of this first date. There's no way I can't do it. So he goes to the bathroom, probably to shit out the complete mess that he just engulfed. And as he's in the bathroom, I whip out my handy dandy phone, and I, like, hit up my best friends. And I'm like, one of you needs to call me in, like, ten minutes and get me out of this fucking situation, because if you don't, I'm never gonna make it home alive, because I'm just gonna bang my head against the wall. So, he finishes the dessert, and we pay, and we're walking out, and I've got my food in one hand and my bag in the other. And he goes, you don't want to, like, put your food in the bag? Because he wanted to hold my hand. I was like, no, um, I'm gonna hold on to the food, and I'm gonna hold on to my bag. We're good. Gucci. And bam, my friend calls, and I'm like, thank you, baby Jesus. And she's like, your mom called me, and she wants you to come home. So what do I do? I turn to him, and I go, my friend got hit by a car. I got to go pick her up. And he goes, whoa, whoa, what, what? And he's so shocked, and, like, as soon as it enter it leaves my mouth, like, I'm just like, was that a little bit too dramatic? But at this point, like, I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I want to go home. So he walks me to my car, and I put my stuff in my car, and I obviously go in for a hug. Like, my hands go like this, my face goes like that, his face is over here, avoid all contact. Check. Except not check. Because he comes off of the hug, he moves his face in front of mine, and open mouth kisses me. It took every cell in my body, every fiber of my being, not to screech, like at the top of my lungs. So he, he, he did that, that happened. So basically, the moral of the story is don't go on dates with people who look like Nick Jonas because they'll open mouth kiss you. So if y'all enjoyed the story time, give it a big old thumbs up. I'm gonna go play with my puppers. Ta-ta for now!